Exercise 6. Anna Company issues 6% five-year bonds on December 31, 2011 with a par value of $140,000 in semi-annual interest payments. We're asked to use the above straight-line bond amortization table in prepared journal entries to record the issuance of bonds on December 31, 2011. These bonds sold for $147,743. We see that as the initial carrying value. The bonds have a par value of $140,000, which means they sold at a premium. The journal entry to record the issuance is a debit to cash for the amount that Anna receives as a result of the issuance, $147,743, and we credit two liability accounts. Bonds payable holds the par value, $140,000, and premium on bonds payable holds the difference, $7,743. The balance and premium on bonds payable will be eliminated over the next 10 semi-annual periods. This is the process of amortization. Letter B asks us to use the amortization table in prepared journal entries to record the first interest payment on June 30, 2012. When a bond sells at a premium, the carrying value will decrease over time, as the carrying value always moves toward the par value. The decrease in the carrying value is recorded at the time of the cash payments. The journal entry is going to be a debit to bond interest expense, a debit to premium on bonds payable to show the decrease to the liability, and credit cash for the amount of the semi-annual payments. The credit to cash is equal to the bond's par value $140,000 multiplied by the contract rate 6% divided by 2 is 4200 the balance of the unamortized premium drops from $7,743 down to $6,969, a decrease of $774. The liability decreases, so we debit premium on bonds payable for $774. Bond interest expense is the amount necessary to balance our journal entry, $3,426. Bond interest expense is a function of the market rate on the date of issuance. When bonds sell at a premium, the market rate on the date of issuance is lower than the contract rate. The market rate on the date of issuance must have been less than 6%. That's why bond interest expense is less than the amount of the cash. Letter C asks us to prepare the journal entry to record the second interest payment on December 31, 2012. Well, they already told us that this is the straight line method, so we would know that the journal entry stays the same for each of the 10 semi-annual payments. This problem would have been even more interesting had they not told you whether they were using the straight line method or the effective interest method. We would have been able to solve that question by looking at the change in the unamortized premium from the end of period 1 to the end of period 2. 6969 minus 6,195 is $774. When the change in the carrying value, the movement toward par value, is always at the same dollar amount per period, we know that we're using the straight line method. 